Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today we're going to be talking about Bitcoin. We're going to be going back to some of the fundamentals, which I haven't uh, admittedly talked about in a little while. Um, but I think it's important to, to go back to these every once in a while to, to get an idea of you know, what the fundamentals of Bitcoin, uh, what they're doing. Um, and of course, we're going to overlay the price so that you can, you can see what that is doing uh, in relation to it. So if you guys like the content, please subscribe to the channel uh, and also give it a like. And also check out the, the Telegram channel here. You can find the link to it in the description below if you'd like to discuss the charts. Um, and a quick shout out to Coinmetrics.io because I, this is where I got the data from. So what we're looking at is we're looking at the hash rate in terahashes per second um, versus time. And note that this is a logarithmic scale. Now, I, I don't explain this in every video, but I, I want to go over this. So a logarithmic scale just means that, you know, 10 to the 4, and then the next, um, if you go up, it's hard to see, but there's, if you go up all these ticks here, this is 10 to the 5. 10 to the 6, 10 to the 7, 10 to the 8. So each of these right here is 10x, okay? So 10x, 10x, and so on and so forth. So it's not a linear scale. Um, and one of the things that you notice is that as we move forward in time, the hash rate, you know, it, it's starting to level off. It, is it, it is not increasing at the same rate as it once was. And if we overlay the price of Bitcoin, on the y-axis, on the, the secondary y-axis, you can, you can get an idea and appreciate um, what the price of Bitcoin was doing at the time. So you can note that when the hash rate was increasing during this, the first market cycle, it still was increasing after the peak, and it wasn't until uh, the price really started moving down later on that the hash rate actually started decreasing. But it didn't really decrease that long, and it stabilized, and then ultimately started increasing again uh, going into the next bull market. And again, this time though, it you know it increased it, it the the hash rate continued increasing far past the peak, um, and ultimately leveled off uh, many months later, and 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 didn't really decrease um, like it did during the first cycle, but it pretty much just leveled off for a while, and then started gearing gearing back up into action during the third market cycle. But one of the things you notice is that each time each cycle that we have. We're, we're not increasing by as much, on, not only on the Bitcoin price side, but on the hash rate side as well. And note the Bitcoin price is also on a logarithmic scale. So if let's extend this in, in both um, directions so that we can uh, try to extrapolate a little bit later on. We, we know that extrapolating is dangerous, but it, doesn't not, it does not mean that we cannot use past um, trends to at least inform our decisions. It does not mean that things have to continue that way, but we can at least see what they were doing. Um, so one of the things you can note is if we look at the the orders of magnitude that the hash rate increased during this first cycle, and I'm basically drawing it from the bottom to then where the bottom of the price was, so which corresponds basically to the, the bottom of the hash rate. How many orders of magnitude was that? And we could say that that was around 10 to the 7, maybe 10 to the 8 if you want to go all the way down to, to this level here and you can see it did get pretty close to it so it's 10 to the 7 10 to the 8 increases in order of magnitude um, so that's pretty impressive and it also happened in a very short time so the slope is, is fairly steep now if we were to draw the next cycle um, so from the basically going from the bottom to the to the bottom of the next one it only increased by about 10 to the 4 so about three orders of magnitude less increase from the first cycle. The next one is only about 10 to the third. So you can see that the amount the hash rate is increasing each market cycle, so each bull run, is decreasing. Um, and we would continue to expect to see this. Uh, it's it's going to be it's going to get harder and harder to increase the hash rate in orders of magnitude as we really go up this curve. So if we were if we were to continue this. Um, this also, I think, uh, supports the idea of lengthening cycles because we, we, we would expect the hash rate to increase, um, maybe one to two orders of magnitude. But we also know that we would expect the slope to decrease. So if the slope is decreasing, um, then in order to go up another one to two orders of magnitude, then the only way we can do it is if we push it forward in time. We, we draw it out further in time. I drew this out to 2024. That was an arbitrary point. Um, note, however, remember that the price tends to peak 
before the hash rate really levels off. So it's kind of a, it's, it's more of a lagging indicator, if, if you will. But we might expect something like this. And I, I just drew on here a, a hypothetical hash rate that you might see over the coming years. So not only do I think that the price data for Bitcoin supports lengthening cycles, I also think the hash rate data supports it. You know, because we're, we're going to continue to move up the, the curve for hash rate and, and continue to see it go up. But in order to do that, it's going to take more and more time. Uh, and, and so that's kind of more or less from a fundamental point of view, a you know one way to think about it. Here, I just drew from the bottom to the top, uh, just so you guys can get an idea of where the, um, uh, the slope, is, so that you can kind of get a better appreciation for the slope and how it's decreasing. And so we would expect the next one, if we were to draw, say, from this bottom out further, we would expect it continue to decrease um, as well. So I think this is pretty pretty basic. Uh, let me know if you have any questions in the comments below about about the the slopes decreasing or the the orders of magnitude decreasing. Um, sometimes in my head, I think it sounds uh, simple enough, but when you've when you've looked at it for a long time, it's easy to to miss things that are, um, or it's easy to to forget to explain things um, that would seem obvious to me, but then you know it, it's clearly not obvious if I if I didn't if I wasn't working with the data um, frequently so the last thing we're gonna look at here is the price of Bitcoin versus the hash rate with a color-coded time dimension so 09 refers to 2009 19 refers to 2019 so you know the first cycle was from you know this point to this point over here and you can see that it covered many orders of magnitude not only in hash rate but also in price the second market cycle didn't go for as far up as we already saw on the hash rate or price and then the third market cycle did the same thing or it continued that trend of decreasing not only in the orders of magnitude of hash rate it goes up but also in the uh, orders of magnitude in, in bitcoin price that goes up so if we were to just draw some imaginary lines which everyone loves we can see that these are more or less converging and we would expect the um the next cycle to to go up in hash rate but it'll it'll take it a lot longer um and also we would expect the price to go up but not nearly as much as it has in the past and, and we can also see that being um leveled off by this this line here so we might expect something like this where um, you know, the cycles continue to, while the time is lengthening, if you were just looking at the price and the hash rate, it would seem to be getting, um, you know, th those would be diminishing in a sense. So time's getting longer to see the price go up um, uh, not as high as it did last time and for the hash rate to not increase as much as it did the time before. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video, trying to look at some of the fundamental stuff. I did get a comment yesterday on a video asking for more fundamental analysis, so here you go. Um, again, if you guys like the content, subscribe to the channel, give it a like. Check out the Telegram channel here. We have 2,300 people in the channel, so if you want to join that, um, I post some of these graphs in there. So if you want to join and, and talk about it with other people, then feel free. And then finally, if you guys like the content and want to support the channel, uh, want to see what other content I produce. I do have a premium content. I do have premium content that I offer and you can pay in fiat or crypto. Just check out the description below. Um, and we have a private telegram channel and, and I post risk updates for various coins. And, and instead where, you know, a lot of people have been following me for a while and I've talked about uh, putting out reports every month. But after polling my um, supporters, you know, they'd prefer weekly newsletters. So instead of having one report every month that's like 20 pages, single-spaced, that um, most people don't have the time to read, I'm going to be putting out a weekly newsletter probably every Sunday night. Um, I'm, not, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do it by this Sunday, um, just because I, I'm, I'm just now changing it. But it's going to probably come out every Sunday night, and it's just going to be a few pages updating some of the charts, looking at some different types of analysis, and, and kind of giving my thoughts on the market. Um, so if you guys want to check that out, again, check out the description below. And if not, if you're just here for the free content, that's fine. Um, just subscribe to the channel and check out Telegram. Uh, so that'll wrap it up for this video. I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.